We begin the hour with breaking developments in the Middle East, where fears the fighting in Gaza could widen into a regional hot war. The United States and the United Kingdom have launched airstrikes in Yemen at targets linked to Iran-backed Houthi militants. This is footage from Houthi media showing the strikes in Sana'a, which is Yemen's capital. U.S. Central Command also released video showing fighter jets launching from an aircraft carrier at sea. Officials say airstrikes and Tomahawk missiles were fired on at least 16 Houthi military targets. Canada and a number of other countries have provided support and say it's an attempt to restore order on the Red Sea. Houthi militants have launched attacks on commercial ships heading to Israel. The group says it's carrying out those attacks in response to Israel's war in Gaza. There are fears the strikes will worsen an already critical situation. Several regional powers, including Turkey and Iraq, have condemned the attacks. And just into us this hour, there are reports the International Association of Independent Tanker Owners is advising members to avoid the strait leading into the Red Sea. At least four oil tankers have reportedly diverted course following these new strikes in Yemen. Global Affairs Canada did not specify last night, has not yet, what Canada's support entailed. And CBC News inquiries were met with a direction to this joint statement. It was issued alongside the U.S., the U.K., Australia, and a number of other allies. The joint statement says the precision strikes are meant to disrupt the Houthis' ability to carry out attacks on Red Sea shipping. It goes on to say the countries involved hope for de-escalation and stability in the region, but will not hesitate to to defend lives and the free flow of commerce in international waterways. U.S. President Joe Biden says he is not ruling out further strikes if necessary. Sources are telling the New York Times this morning that support from Canada and other allies likely includes logistics and intelligence, but we'll be looking to get further information and clarification from Ottawa today. As far as the story of the attacks, let's go to Rebecca Collard, who's live with us this morning. Rebecca, these are generating a lot of reaction this morning, a lot of concern, but a lot of reaction around the world and in the region. I was mentioning Turkey. That's a part of the most recent reaction. What are you seeing and hearing this morning? Yeah, you know, what's interesting, Heather, is that we've heard from um, Iraq, uh, Oman, uh, um, and also Jordan and Turkey, of course, which are in theory U.S. allies, and they have all really condemned these strikes and talked about the fear that they have that this is going to escalate things further. So, of course, as we talked about, uh, you know, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken just wrapped up a tour of the region where he said, one of his main objectives was to ensure there was no um, um, spillover of this conflict into the region, that there was no regional conflict. And now we're seeing these strikes on Yemen. Now, Turkey's president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, went as far as to say that uh, these strikes could turn the Red Sea into a sea of blood. So really strong words, really strong condemnation from uh, from countries in the region of these strikes, even though I will say, Heather, you know, all of these countries, of course, depend on this shipping route. They also have, um, uh, you know, financial losses um, to contend with because of the fact that the Houthis have been able to disrupt shipping in the way in this way in that route. Now, Russia um, has also condemned these strikes and has actually called for an emergency session of uh, the UN Security Council, which should take place in the next hours here. So, of course, we will be following that as well. Um, and I'll just say from um, the perspective of the Houthis, what we've heard from them um, is that these uh, these strikes by the US and the UK, and of course, as you said, backed by other countries, will not stop them from carrying out more attacks on vessels in the Red Sea, that they will continue to do that, um, Heather, until there is a ceasefire in Gaza. So you mentioned Antony Blinken, and on his uh, diplomatic mission, he did warn of consequences if these attacks didn't stop. They didn't stop, and Joe Biden then authorizing the attacks, which took place last night. Why did the U.S. and the U.K. move when they did last night? Yeah, that's a great question, Heather. And I think um, partly because the economic impact has become so um, heavy for so many countries. So, you know, um, many shipping countries 
uh, companies have are no longer sending any cargo through that route, so they're taking this much longer, much more expensive route. Um, um, I've heard that um, you know insurance for ships that are going through that route are have actually are, are ten times as much. And then just to give you an idea, here in Germany yesterday, um, the Tesla manufacturer said that they were going to have to shut down mm -hmm. production at a Tesla plant here in Germany for two weeks because um, of these attacks. And, you know, I think that um, while there's this fear of, of, of a regional escalation, there is also, uh, you know, this, um, the U.S., the U.K. wanting to send a message to the Houthi rebels, which, of course, are allied with Iran, um, are part of this so-called axis of resistance, that they will not uh, tolerate these sort of attacks. So I think, um, obviously, there's this economic concern because of these um, attacks uh, that the Houthis have been carrying out. But also, I think that the U.S. Um, uh, wanted to send a message that mm -hmm. these things will not be tolerated uh, by the Houthis or by other countries that are part of this, or the militant groups that are part of this axis of resistance. Heather. Rebecca, thank you so very much. Rebecca Collard live for us this morning.